Hello everyone, how are you doing? Welcome to some storytelling time with uh, with PS. So um, a few years ago, three years ago to be precise, uh, around August 2019, before the pandemic, uh, my then girlfriend and soon to be wife, uh, Christina, was pregnant with our soon to be uh, child, Afonso. And we thought, well, we should really renovate our apartment before we get the kid um, because it has some moisture and uh, the main room is is um, is too hot in the summer uh, so we need to put some extra glasses and we need to put some fake walls some fake ceilings isolate the place uh, maybe renovate the floor as well um, you know do some uh, basic uh, touch-ups to the house. So we went to this uh, local place. Uh, we randomly found, we searched online for, for reviews. This one had a negative review, but overall uh, some, uh, decent, um, some decent ratings. And it was very local, so we just decided to, you know, uh, walk in and ask it was this place did the shot uh and and at Praça do Comércio 7A in Almada which is close to where we live uh, this is right next to the to the to the market the municipal market so it's very central very visible area and uh it had a big board saying saying Tinta Shot Inc which is a famous um painting uh company thing but they also did general renovation not just uh painting stuff so uh we contacted them they sent us some uh some they came around to see the place they uh noted down what we wanted to do um and they sent us some uh invoices to get stuff done uh we managed to get the, the glasses done and that was paid and they were like middlemen for that and so it was paid directly to that uh other person who did a pretty good job i mean there are some flaws but overall i think it was pretty pretty well done and then they kept delaying the other part we already paid half of it and uh, we kept waiting for them to come and do the work uh, after a lot of months of nagging uh, after we already had the kid uh they finally they finally sent the guy in to do some minor uh, part of the work but they didn't do the the bulk of the work they did some repairing on uh, on outside which was just going over some cracks and and putting some produce in it to isolate a bit better from the outside and then they were supposed to do the inside uh put fake walls and fake ceiling and and stuff like that and they never did that they said that they were they were busy with another work uh they didn't know when they were gonna start maybe next week the next week became maybe in two weeks we would go there again uh and uh kept getting delayed and delayed then eventually the pandemic came and then it was a problem that the the workers didn't want to work uh then after and we kind of understood that and at that point we already had the kids so we weren't really pressing that much um a few more months down the line uh the pandemic was starting to go down and actually we, there were some other renovation happening in the building i remember we were forced to work from home with the kid the kid was trying to sleep and there were some renovations in the building so people were doing construction work during the pandemic and uh, so we were like why the hell aren't these guys doing the construction work that we ordered during the pandemic so we pressed them again and they had problems with people then they had problems with supplies always some excuse and then they stopped answering emails and we let it go for a while we tried again a few months later still no answer on the email okay uh then we tried calling uh they wouldn't pick up stop picking up and a few more months passed, tried calling again, multiple times on the same day, would uh, go to, to, to busy mode, would not pick up. 
so yeah, they stopped picking up. They changed locations from this store. This store became empty, and they told us about this that they were they had two locations and they were gonna abandon this one and focus on the other one. They never gave us the address for the other one though, so we stopped seeing the guy uh, locally, and he stopped picking up the phone and he stopped emailing us. And we are down about 1,000 euros of work that was never done. And at this point, we just wanted to, you know, do some math. What have you actually done of this thing? Get our money back and move on with our life. Uh, but they never replied. So they are owing us 1,000 euros, about 1,000 euros uh, worth. Because we don't know how much the work that they did the minimal work that they did how much it actually cost them so um so yeah so anyways um we have their email geral at smartcast.pt we have their phone number uh so uh smartcast.pt is just, just an empty web page but we ha ha did find a, a facebook page for that it says smartcast which is good it has the correct address it has the correct uh mobile phone it has the correct uh, email the one that they don't answer that's interesting why is there a banner of another company as the main page what okay um and going far back when did it first start that they started putting a banner of another page uh i didn't actually prepare this part of the video i prepared a lot of the other stuff but uh elite in 28 february 2022 let's see how far back it goes still says elite november 2021 And I don't recognize the guy in any of these places. So maybe the guy that that uh, that uh, talked with us was like a manager guy, and this guy that is actually talking here is like a partner of some sort. Uh, his name is Armindo, apparently, and he has the the main company, uh, the the elite elite Quada company. Um, which is fine, I guess. We don't know who the hell that other guy is. Different email, different name, but it does have the smart chest thing all over it. So that's weird. So I searched up Elite uh, Quada and uh, I managed to find this web page. And it does says the name of the other guy. So that checks out. That's interesting. Um... Then I looked up some older emails and I found the name of the original guy who talked with us, which was uh, Joel Freire. I managed to find his Facebook page. And it does says that he's a managing director at SmartJest, so that checks out. It is this guy. And one of the main pages that we have here is his collaboration, announcing his collaboration with uh, Tinta Shotinku in 2016, so when the company was being formed. And then it has this guy next to the guy that I do know. And this guy is the guy who is on the page, the Armindo guy. So this guy, from Elite Quada. So I guess they have some sort of connection of some sort. Uh, maybe one does the work, the other one does, you know, paperwork. I don't know. Um, Anyways, that was interesting. So, two different companies, or two different company names, apparently. Don't know if they changed, or if they merged, or whatever the deal is. So, I looked up the DNS for both websites, uh, for Smart Chest and for Elite, and they both are hosted on the same server. Huh. So, definitely a connection going on there. Uh, I searched for uh, view DNS info, we'll just try to see where they were hosted. Uh, it seems they were hosted at Scaleway Daddy Box or at OVH. Um, and then I searched on, on PT. The cat wants to participate on the story. Not today. Uh, and I searched on the PT domains because when you register a PT domain, you have to enter your information. And I finally found uh, proper information for, for the main guy. Captain Smart Limitada and a street that I've never seen before. Maybe it is home, it's his home address. I'm not doxing anyone. This is public information. Anyone can search this, just so you know. 
Um, but the name does seem familiar, and apparently his middle name is Tells, which is good to know. Uh, and uh, managed by OVH, so that makes sense. And uh, the other uh, website, Elite Quada, this one actually has uh, their own name, so it's different companies, and also managed by OVH. Okay? Um, so I've been searching for... Captain Smart information, and I finally managed to find information on the company itself. I finally find found the NIF, which was what I was aiming for. It's the fiscal number that I need if I want to, you know, submit a formal complaint with a lawyer uh, or or something. I'm I'm going to try submitting it at Deco. Um, which, if you don't know what it is, it's it's going to be hard to explain. But I'll, I'll get to it in a in a while. So uh, there are a few websites in uh, in Portugal that like track the different companies and see and tell you the state that there are. And if you pay a little money, you can get some extra information. But they give you the basic information, which is the address that they are registered in, which checks out with the one that we knew it from. Like this is the correct address for this, and. Um, and it has the NIF, which was what I wanted to know. And it tells me that it's still open for business, which is good. Because if it had been dissolved, that meant that we would never see our money because we didn't uh, ask for it before it got um, closed down for creditors or whatever it's called. Uh, but if it's still open, that means we can still sue them in some way or get someone to collect the money uh, because they're still open for business. So that's good to know. Uh, so yeah, this is, uh, I got the NIF. That's what I want to know. So Deco, uh, Deco, 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 Deco protest. So <clears throat> there is the, um, there's this company association called Deco, which is a defense of consumer uh, in, in Portugal where you can complain about a company that did you wrong and they will help give you like, uh, legal assistance of some sort to uh, get the company to respond to you and take it seriously um, and uh, I think they also give you advice on how to do legal follow-up on stuff uh, they're pretty known they're also known for not being um, also taking a bit advantage of consumers themselves Uh but overall, they're known for having a good assistance to consumers who want to complain about stuff. And they give like, uh, they do all sorts of different services. Anyways, I don't want to talk about Deco anymore. Uh, this is one of the platforms that you can use to report when a company did something wrong uh, to you. Uh, if you don't have like a lawyer to do it for you. Which is kind of stupid. I mean, I would assume that the legal system would have a way for you to just go into a website and say, okay, this NIF is not paying me the money that he's due for this amount of time by now. Um, and the legal system would automatically process that and either get the guy to pay up or put him in jail. Because we have all the information about him. Why do I need to uh, get a lawyer, be paying a lawyer? Why do I need to get a collection company to go collect the money? Something that is... I mean, I already need to have all the information. I already need to know the name of the person, where they live, uh, their, finan their financial number. I need to have all this information before I can proceed legally to do anything. So why isn't, it there, why isn't there like a streamlined service to, you know, cut all the bureaucratic bullshit that always makes these kind of things prescribe and allows people who are taking advantage of other people and not paying their debts to, to roam free. Because it's, it's, it's endemic in, in Portugal. I've seen a lot of companies that just start to collect debt when they see that they can't manage it anymore. 
they start uh, undercutting the, the the employees. They start undercutting the their suppliers. They stop paying uh, those people. They create a new company. They migrate all the clients. They close the other company uh, in bankruptcy, and they just don't pay all the things. And they start making profit on the other company with exactly the same uh, clients. Um, and I've seen it happen multiple times. And it's it's a cancer. It's a cancer in our economy. It undermines like people who are actually doing the work and need to get paid for that are getting screwed over by these parasites. <coughs> I can understand how how these people ended up in that place and how it's the only way they have to, you know, keep afloat. If they only know how to do this business and this business is going under they will remake the business and try to make it successful this time. And, you know, they want to keep living. They want to keep their quality of life. I can understand how someone reaches that point, but I do not accept that they are screwing over everyone else uh, to reach that point. Um, and they are destroying a lot of lives in that process. My life was not destroyed by these 1,000 of euros that these guys in particular have uh, so far scammed me from. But um, companies that I worked before have have had significant uh, debt because other companies would not pay up when 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 they were supposed to and did did these schemes of recreating the company with something else and not paying and taking money from this, taking money from the supplier. Uh, or taking the goods from the supplier, promising that they will only pay when the client pays and then the client pays them and they keep the money for themselves and they never use the supplier again. They will only pay them like half if they ever need the supplier again. And this happens a lot in Portugal and this needs to be cut down. And it's one of the reasons that I decided that I should make a formal complaint instead of just letting it go, you know, and just, you know... Um, Considering that 1,000 euros was a cheap way to get uh, Joel Ferreira out of my life forever. Um, but um, I, I actually want Joel Ferreira to do the responsible thing and pick up the phone and figure out the money that or the work that needs to be done to compensate the money that we already paid for and uh, do the proper arrangement as a professional company should. So, yeah. So that's the story time that I wanted to share because I've been um, insomniac today over this. I was going through my to-do list of stuff that I needed to to clean up and that I will never do. And this was this thing that's been here for pretty much over a year. Submit the complaint to Deco about this company and I never have the NIF, so I could never submit it. Now I finally have a NIF. Now I can submit it. And this is what I've been doing uh, tonight and uh, stressing about instead of sleeping. So, yeah, that was the story that I wanted to share with you all. Um, please don't go after this. Uh, any of these people uh, don't. This is not a call for, for action of, uh, of that sort. Um, leave them alone. Uh, don't stalk them or dox them or anything like that. Everything I showed was uh, public information on the internet. I didn't show anything um, that I'm not allowed uh, to show. Uh, anyone could have done this research work, but uh, at the same time, I do not encourage anyone to destroy anyone's lives. That would be uh, bad. Even though sometimes I feel like I want to do some, some of that kind of stuff, I... Let's try to take it through the legal ways and see how that works out. My feeling is that it's not going to work out. But let's give it a try anyways. Anyways, that's the story for tonight. Hope you enjoyed this little uh, different kind of video. And uh, see you next video. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care.